Hi, Mike Gibson, Jim Hermiller, Dwayne Pinto coming to you live from Sky 2017. We're talking about coronary occlusion in TAVR. What are some of the risk factors, ways to prevent it? What's your strategy? Well, uh, Mike, it's an uncommon complication. You know, estimates somewhere around half a percent to a percent, but when it does happen, it's a really uh, you know difficult complication to deal with, uh, around a 30, 40 percent mortality. But uh, you know the the risk factors are uh, female gender, uh, small annulus, small uh, sinuses of the valsalva, and low coronaries. Uh, so those are you know cases that will worry about this uh, occurring. But a lot of the uh, patients don't have any of these. So mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, Jim, yeah. you've uh, you've dealt with this. Yeah, I've dealt with this. You know, I think the other risk factor is somebody that you're going to do valve and valve. Those are uh, uh, probably have mm -hmm. threefold higher risk as well. Wow. Um, and I think in those patients that, hey, the coroners are low, there's not a lot of room in the sinus, those are the ones that we protect beforehand and basically have a guide wire and a, and a stent down the vessel. So if we do have occlusion, we can deal with it. Wow. Right. So, so uh, in terms of different devices, what are ways that you can minimize this in terms of struts and size and things like that? Well, you know, it's, it's relatively easy to protect the coronaries with uh, both of the devices in the U.S. market. Uh, you know, with the, the core valve, the Evolute valve, the guiding catheter is going to be behind the frame mm -hmm. uh, after deployment, which is, you know, fine. Uh, with the Edwards valve, uh, you have it backed out a little bit into the aorta during deployment. Uh, the, the newer uh, Edwards valve is a little bit taller uh, you know, on the top, so it still does, in many cases, go across the coronaries. But it, with both, it's quite easy after deployment also uh, to get into the coronaries. Uh, right, Jim, right. we saw a case yeah. yours. Yeah. So, and I think um, uh, we can get back into e either device. Uh, I think uh, the other issue is somebody comes back in with unstable angina down the road. We haven't closed off their coronaries during the procedure, but they get coronary disease down the road, and you have to reaccess those coronaries. Mm -hmm. And there's some tips and tricks to get through both of these. So and, what are some of those, Jim? Yeah, so let's just say for the core valve anyway, mm -hmm. to get in the left corner, you kind of want a smaller, sort of a JL3, JL3.5 guide, not a sort of a big XB or a contralateral support guide. Right. You want to kind of come in from above to get in. Mm -hmm. um, and for the right coronary, generally a, a Judd Wright works or a Williams Wright mm -hmm. um, kind of morphology. Sometimes just a diagnostic catheter, get the wire down, exchange out for a guiding catheter. But I would say 95% plus, you're going to be able to get through these. I remember, well, Mike, when I was your fellow, you told me, don't send a man in to do a boy's job when yes, we were choosing our, yes. our guiding catheters. And yes. you really just want a, a, a simple JL shape. And from above, it, it just passes through the uh, through the cell and you just don't want to jam it up against the left main, so you really want a gentle catheter. And the approach for a valve and valve procedure? Yeah, so, you know, I think many valve and valves are, are core valve just because it's a super annular, particularly in the smaller valve sizes. Um, and so basically, um, I, we had a case yesterday, we had to basically protect both the right and the left, mm. and you've got guides, stents, and actually, a lot of times I'll already have a guide liner in. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so you're ready to deal with anything. Yeah. And uh, in this particular case, the left main was tight and you know, it was pretty easy. Pull the stent back, stent it, and uh, you're good. Yeah, I think those are the kind of technical uh, advancements over the last couple of years is before we used to just put the guiding catheter in. Then we put the guiding catheter and the wire in, and then we put the stent in, and now Jim uh, rightfully says, let's just keep it even easier and have the guideliner in so you can just easily deliver the uh, stent. I think, Jim, too, you want to uh, maybe comment on, you want to be mindful, too, of which stents you use in the left main, which you can dilate up. Oh, yeah. Uh, which so, not, uh, right. you know. I think, uh, great, uh, great point. Um, you know, if you've got a 5-0 left main, you, know, you need to know what uh, you can dilate that stent to. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, certainly one of the new ones is Onyx. Uh, you can take up very big, they have big, uh, XL. Yeah, um, and then um, actually the Synergy you can take up to five and a half or, yeah. or, or bigger. Yeah. And uh, for science the Science, maybe four, seven, five. Oh, yeah. So it's just something to be aware of. Yeah. Any other tips, tricks? Um, how You know, we got a question of how long of a stent, how far do you kind of snorkel it yeah. back? Yeah, I, th I think um, uh, if it's an Edwards case, snorkel it behind the frame. Mm -hmm. so you just need to get behind the frame. And I think uh, for uh, the cases with core valve, you just want to be back 
far enough from that ostium and you're clearly have opened up that ostium and you're behind a leaflet or whatever seems to be obstructing it. So you want to be up above that. Got it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Any final words of advice? Uh, well, you know, the recognition of the patient, you know, as we move to the minimalist approach, you might not necessarily have the TE telling you that the ventricle is uh, hypocontractile and a number of things should pass through your mind after valve deployment and the patient is hypotensive and that's annular rupture, mm -hmm. tamponade, coronary occlusion, uh, and or wide open AI. And I think that, uh, you know, these are things that should pass through our minds, but when it's uh, coronary occlusion, often the, the presentation is just hypotension. Mm -hmm. uh, and around 70% occur after valve deployment, but can it be after valvuloplasty? It can be out of the lab. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just one of those things we should be mindful of. Yeah. Final words? Yeah, I, I would say the other is left main goes down, just put them on bypass. Don't mess around. If you don't have a stent and you're going to have to recross it, like, get them on bypass, and then, then you'll have the situation. Better. Right. Yeah, good right. advice. Exactly. Definitely. Guys, thanks for joining us, and uh, thanks to all of you for joining us here live from Sky 2017.